Flexibility. There are two types of flexibility that I'm going to talk about. One type of flexibility deals with the mind. The other type of flexibility deals with the body. I'm going to talk about flexibility of the body first and then I'll transition into flexibility of the mind. Flexibility of the body. Now, generally speaking, whatever type of sport you're in, I come from a wrestling background so I'll use a lot of examples for wrestling. Whatever type of sport you're in, uh, generally you'll, you want that type of flexibility. For instance, in wrestling we have to do all sorts of exercises with just about nearly every bar body part that we own so that when we get into situations where we're being pushed beyond our normal range of motion, uh, there isn't going to be a problem. Now you're saying beyond our normal range of motion, what does that mean? Well, if for instance you have not done neck exercises, meaning if you haven't done, well, there's a series of neck exercises that I actually have a couple different videos on YouTube.com actually, Coach Shannon, you can check those out, where you do kickovers back and forth or you do neck circles on your head and anyone that's wrestled probably knows those particular type of exercises. Those are two examples. And then there are several other examples with the wall and whatnot and with a partner you can do a back arch into the person's head, they catch your head and you roll out to the side. Also, sports specific, those are sports specific you're saying, but even more sports specific than that. Being headlocked and then either rolling through or doing a back bridge off your back so that you use those same specific muscles that you would be using uh, that you're doing those exercises with to make your neck flexible and strong. Now you use it in a sport specific manner. The same type of flexibility you're going to need with uh, a half Nelson and or a bar arm. So you're, you're, you're using all different types of body parts. For instance, on a bar, a bar is it's a little bit different in MMA, but a bar arm in wrestling is maybe you've got your arm in a bar and they're running you over to your back. If your shoulder is not flexible and your neck is not flexible from those two different positions, now when you're getting run over, there's a likely higher likelihood that you could actually become hurt because those muscles and that range of motion has been limited not to go beyond that range. In other words, if you're put in those situations time and again, your muscles actually have a muscle memory and they will, you know, they'll expand by demand and they'll respond to that so that there is there is less of a chance of an injury. And you have to do the same thing nearly with every body part in your body for wrestling. And I suggest it's like that with other sports too. So those are those are examples of being flexible in sport and how do you increase that flexibility? You put yourself in the sports specific positions that require that range of motion. So if and when you have to go beyond that range of motion, if you've done adequate amounts of training and you have a wrestling coach that has an idea of what he's doing or she's doing, then you're you're you know that, that range of motion that you go beyond, you'll have already gone in that position, so there's less a likelihood for you to get hurt. Um, the other type of flexibility is just as important. Mental flexibility. Now you're asking, okay, mental flexibility. What in the Sam Hill is that? Mental flexibility means having the ability to respond to adversity within a blink of an eye and have it not affect you or it will not affect you. In other words, uh, me and my assistant coach at the United States Olympic Education Center used to always say this halfway jokingly, halfway serious. Sometimes the lights will go off and you've got to be able to respond to that. Well, guess what happened? Uh, I think at the Chula Vista Olympic Training Center, which is in California, in nearly our second or third year, we were at a training camp and Canada was there, the senior national team was there, uh, the USOEC development team was there, and the lights did go off. Okay, so what were we going to do? Cancel practice? No, we weren't going to cancel practice. It was light enough outside, probably like, you know, how dawn is or how dusk is, where the sun's just coming up or the sun is setting. Wasn't as bright as a normal day, but we could see each other. It, there wasn't a hazard of us tripping over one another and, you know, hurting ourselves. So we, we kept on training. But for some athletes, you know, they their mind wasn't flexible. They had a hard time dealing with it because they, you know, they were so used to being in this environment and training in this way and this, that, and the other, and it was a little bit difficult for them. Over time, you know, let's say 15 or 20 minutes, everybody adjusted and it was fine. But in those crucial, you know, first five or six minutes, uh, well, let's put it into a wrestling match example. If you're inflexible in a match mentally and you get a bad call, what happens? You don't have 20 minutes to respond. You've got nearly three or four seconds to, like the blink of your eye to be like, all right, you know what, I can deal with this, let's move on. So do you guys understand the type of flexibility mentally that I'm talking about? 
Okay, well, how do you develop that? Just the same way that you develop the other physical flexibility where you put yourself in scenarios over and over and over again so the, the mind and the muscle actually expand and respond to that, um, what is it called, conditioning. You can condition your mind to be mentally flexible. How? Well, just like in that example at that Olympic Training Center National Team Training Camp, because they were in that scenario, the next time that scenario comes up, you know, they've already dealt with it so they can do it again. I suggest you have moments like that just about every single day in practice, right? Just about every time you compete in competition and you're like, well, what are you talking about? Well, how many of you have gotten bad calls before? I've gotten plenty of bad calls. How many of you were able to respond in the blink of an eye and have it roll off your shoulder like it didn't matter? I've done that sometimes and other times it affected me for the whole tournament. So how, how do you address that and how do you get better at it? When Well, first, I think you've got to do a little bit of planning. First, to be mentally flexible, I think you have to plan for the best case scenario. You get your hand raised, everything goes wonderful. And the worst case scenario, things just don't go your way, but you're, you know they're not going to go your way, so you have a plan B and plan C to deal with them. And then everything in between. Does that make sense? So you're planning for the best case scenario. You're planning for the worst case scenario. And then there's subsets of the best and worst case scenarios. And that's going to be uh, everything in the middle of that spectrum that I just created there. If you have a little bit of pre-planning, you can become more mentally flexible. If you are more mentally flexible, I submit things will not affect you in a detrimental way as much. You get that bad call and it's not a big deal to you. You know what? Because when I was in practice, I, I gave myself bad calls. When I was in a practice match, my coach told me right before, you know what? You're not always going to get all the calls. Calls aren't always going to go your way and you need to be able to respond almost immediately. Okay, so what's the point here? The point is if you do just a little bit of pre-planning and a little bit of practice and a little bit of conditioning, you can become a little bit more physically flexible and you can become a little bit more mentally flexible. But again, just like everything, that you want to become really good at, you've got to consistently practice. So how do you practice in a, in a competition? In a competition, if you get a bad call, you know what? Uh, you know, I, I expected that bad call and I'm going to make the situation so that a bad call is not going to affect my ability to perform at a high level. So psychologically, maybe you're doing some self-talk prior to and while the bad call is going on. and mentally maybe you're seeing a vision of that bad call and you know what you're standing up I'm gonna I'm gonna go right through it so there's some self-talk that you can do and there's some imagery that you can do I submit and suggest that when you practice that in competitions now if you get to a junior world championships or world championships or national championships or an Olympic Games when those things happen because of your mental flexibility you will be able to respond in kind without it without a uh, you know any hesitation like the blink of an eye and you can move forward Physical flexibility, I think, is going to be the same way. I think you need to have a good trainer and or a good strength and conditioning coach and or a good, you know, sports specific coach so that your body is going through the ranges of motion that you're going to be in in the competitions. If you don't know what range of motion you're going to be in the competitions, meaning uh, I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't expect to get headlocked, I didn't expect to get arm barred, then you can ask your coach. And, and this is where the coach becomes a, a key part of your training. Or... Nowadays, just like you're watching this on YouTube, you can YouTube headlocks probably on YouTube and you'll see all of the various different type of headlocks that come up. And now you can say, hey, coach, you know what? I think we should work on this if your coach actually isn't working on that. If you're an athlete, you know, just as a heads up, giving suggestions to your coach is uh, sometimes can be a little bit tricky. So the way that you actually execute, you know, that explanation is going to be important. So you need to be thinking about that just a little bit. Flexibility. Just kind of went through flexibility with you in a nutshell. You can find out more information like this at youtube.com, Coach Shannon, Coach Shannon Talks.